What's up? This is your boy Rampage Jackson once again here with Bear, and we got a very special guest, my brother Leoto the Dragon Machida. Yes, <laughs> honor to be here, my friend. Man, thank you so much. Man, thank you for coming, man. Let, let me tell you one thing: I'm not back belt in English, okay? I'm a blue belt in English, <laughs> but I'll try my best. Man, your English is is way better than yeah. back in. Back oh in the yeah, day. yeah, when we fought, I. Pr- I barely speak English. Oh, you didn't speak English back then? A little bit, just yeah. a little bit, yeah. Yeah, because I remember in the press conference, I, I think you had like a translator. Translator, yeah. yeah. And how did you learn your English? Ah, uh, street language, you know, street <laughs> English. So I, but I studied, I, take some, I took some classes and tried to learn and tried to be surrounded by American guys yeah. and learn. A lot. Yeah. How, how do you say um, good afternoon? Bo, you say Boa tarde. Boa tarde. Boa tarde. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, I've, I'm always jealous because I always wanted to learn Portuguese. Uh, uh, one of my good friends um, when I was uh, fighting in Pride, I, he used to train with me all the time. He's a um, black belt from, um, I think he's from Rio. His name is uh, Anderson Goncalves. He he was he taught me like, um, he taught me a little bit of Portuguese. That's all, all bad the words. Yeah. <laughs> so only bad words. É uma popozuda. <laughs> Super me pau. Like hey, no. Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. All the bad words. All the bad words. Of course. So, so since he taught me all the bad words, he didn't speak English. So I taught him all the bad words, right? So one time, my mom came to to visit, and um, he didn't speak no English, just the bad words I taught him. So I told him like. Um, Hello was like, what's up, my nigga? <laughs> so he came and he met my mom. He was like, what's up, my nigga? <laughs> my mom, my mom. <laughs> and my mom has never met anybody from Brazil before. You know, Memphis. And he was just saying like all the bad words and shit like that. And then once I explained my mom, she Yeah, Brazilian, Brazilian love to do the same. When <laughs> American tried to learn Portuguese, only bad words. Yeah. Like you were page. That's <laughs> that I would I would not expect anything else from you. Yeah, yeah. Mom, my mom knew that I that she she's like what's what's wrong with I said oh my he from Brazil they, uh, uh, I'm teaching him English he said yeah and so <laughs> she she loved him right away then they tried to teach him correct English but you know it was I I was dying on it. no one ever has never said to my mom what's up my nigga <laughs> <laughs> I mean when it comes to comedy I don't put anything past you when it comes to fighting we have two legends in the house right now and for the MMA community watching this this was a this was a big one for me I I feel like having both of you guys sit at the same table and talk years later. I mean, you guys faced each other years ago. You guys are two icons in the sport. First of all, I want to say thank you for joining us. It is an honor to be here. You know, I'm not a fighter. I love fighting. I love watching what you guys did for the sport. I think the MMA community is so excited. This was one of the most requested guests. Uh, Lyoto Mashido is one of the most requested guests for us to have on here, especially because of the dynamic and and how much you've done for the sport. So definitely want to start with that. First of all, when it comes to you two, you guys faced each other years ago. What do you guys remember about the fight? Have you guys even talked since the fight? Let's no. start with this. Let's dive right into it. No, 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 I haven't talked. No. I, well, I, I think I, I, should, I should tell you about my training camp. My training camp for you was one of the hardest training camps I ever had because you're a very difficult person to fight. Yeah. And I and I never wanted to fight you. I'm like, no way, I don't want to fight. <laughs> it's like so difficult, right? And I, and we we hired this this um this karate guy from England because I, I was training with the guys from from England at the time. And and I can't remember his name. Terry something. I'm bad. I'm bad with names. But he but I know he was in that movie uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, and he was a karate guy. And so I felt weird. I was like, why is this karate guy is going to try? to train me to fight another karate guy. Why? And then, you know, it's because you know how mixed martial art is. Like, yeah. his martial art is more superior than everything. And that's how people think in their mind. And he would bring in his karate guys and stuff like that for me to spar. And he would get mad when I did good against them. <laughs> <laughs> it was the hardest training camp, bro. Yeah, but for me it was tough too because, you know, I came from a loss before before our fight, you know, I came from a Shogun's last mm. fight, Shogun. So, and I was, you know, was knockout fight. You no, know, I my defeat was knockout. So I was pretty much like, you no, know, nervous about the fight because I know you a tough opponent, mm. former champion, heavy hands. You no, know. yeah. but it was good. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah. It, it was a, it was a good fight, and, and um, uh, a a lot of people. Didn't think I was going to be able to uh, pull out the, off the victory. And one one of the people was Randy Couture. 
And he was talking trash about, oh, I do much better against Machida than Rampage and this, that. He said that in, in the press uh, once or twice, and they got back to me. And then when you kicked them in the mouth. <laughs> I was laughing. <laughs> Bro, I was laughing. Sorry, Randy, if you watch this, but you know our history. Randy, Randy Couture, like, we kind of fell out over the years. We cool now, but y'all know I keep it real. You... You kicked the, you kicked him in the mouth, and he, I think his tooth went flying. <laughs> uh, in terms of the fight, a lot of people. Hopefully, you have a better relationship with with everybody now. You know, but uh, in terms of the fight, a lot of a lot of people on the internet say you know it was it was a back and forth brawl, and people were surprised who won or who didn't win or whatever. Was was there any point in the fight where you felt like, oh man, I, I, I won this thing? Because you guys you guys put hands on each other the entire time. Yeah, it was a very strategic fight for me. And I knew Rampage was a tough opponent. No, he couldn't hit me because if he hit me, like I would be in problem. Then I tried to be away from, from, from him, you know, keep the distance, kick his leg. You know. That's what I did. I just, I just really want to win the fight. No, want to win the fight. I, I, mm -hmm. I, I didn't, didn't care about what people would say about me, but I just want to win the fight because I just said this. I came from a loss, yeah. so I want to, you know, excel again and and do a better job to 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 have another opportunity. Mm -hmm. That's why it was very strategic fight for me. That fight was so close, and you know I. I was so surprised when they gave me the decision because mm -hmm. it was close enough for them to give it to him, and and no one would have said anything. It was it was that close. And and um, a little backstory at that time with me in the UFC, we didn't see eye to eye, mm. and so you know I I even like trolled them like making a face like oh what I got the decision because it it was that close. So one it was one of my um <clears throat> it was one of my um tough toughest fights, uh. uh Based off strategy and stuff, like because yeah. like the way you move and and the way you um, switch stances and stuff like that, this it's hard for any. I, I'm sure if I had a hard time training for you, it's hard for anybody to prepare to fight someone like you. Yeah. And then after the the Randy fight and after his fight, then I believe you had to fight. Was it John Jones? Right after the Randy Couture fight, you fought John yes. Jones. And, yes. And John Jones had the belt at the time, right? Yes. What yes. did you What did you have to do to prepare? I, for a guy like John Jones, who everybody considers one of the best ever. So I knew that I had a different game than I could impress him. I could like scare him some some way. But I had a, a very big problem in that camp that people maybe people they don't know. So I have a uh, staph infection, my my right legs. You no, know, I have three staph infection here. And I, because I trained too much for that fight. No, you know, when you have a belt in front of you, you want to catch the belt so you're gonna give your best and then and I hired a lot of a lot of a conditional trainer a lot of people to help me King Mo went there uh, uh, Glover Teixeira went there a lot of people went there to help me out so I trained so hard for that fight but I think I, I had overtrained you know I trained too much so I have a fever sometimes during the camp because when you want to try to give your best performance you want to give your best but sometimes you, you know uh, overload like you you do too much overtraining you know then for me i i i knew that i could control the distance that i did in the first round i could control john's a lot and he was pretty much lost at the first round then he changed the strategy and in the middle of the second round i got tired man no it's it could not happen that because i fight for the belt because my style I move a lot. I don't let the guy figure out the distance, the time. Or either I hit, either I move, you no, know, all the time. And the moment I stop, stop movement. So Jones took advantage of that, and he hit me so hard. And and we, first of all, he took me down and elbowed my face. So he scratched here my face. Then Joe McCart uh, asked us to. Interrupt the, he interrupted the fight and asked the doctor to come in. Mm. Then when the doctor came in, I didn't have the time to recover. I was I still was dizzy. No. Then he said he separated the fight again. He said, fight, keep fighting. So because when I stand up from the, the, the take down from John Jones, I was resting a little bit and recover. 
when he interrupted the fight and asked the doctor, the doctor checked my face and said, no, okay, he can't go. Then I didn't have time to recover, no? I would hold him for a while mm -hmm. to recover and, and have more chance. So when I saw John Jones, I saw three John Johns <laughs> <laughs> in my face. Which one have to choose, you know? Mm -hmm. Then I choose the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I heard you always go for the guy in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, then he took advantage and got caught me in the guillotine. Yeah. He's a, a super you know, intelligent fighter. He's... He did what he, what he did is so so hard. You no, know? be yeah. a champ for so long time and change the the class yeah. now heavyweight. Yeah. Why he, Why you think he went up to heavyweight? I'm not sure. Maybe because you no know, more money, more challenges, or finish his career in, in you no know, like a superhero, like a super fighter. <laughs> Man, I think he probably got tired of like cutting weight and stuff like that. You he, think so? I think so because he he at heavyweight he don't look better. You know what I'm saying? He look a little little puffier. Yeah. And I, you know I don't know because um when back when we was fighting there at the UFC uh, 205 was the weight class. You know. Yeah, was, yeah, it, yeah. It was the money weight class, uh, but I'm not sure about now. Maybe heavyweight is the money weight class now. Yeah, probably. Yeah, but, yeah you're right. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not sure, but. I, th I think he'll do well at, at at heavyweight just because of his just his wrestling and his jujitsu game. Mm -hmm. I, I think I think he'll I think he'll do well. Did did he eye poke you in the fight at all? No, no, not remember, mm. not that I remember. Did he? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he got me in that. Yeah, he got me in a couple of times. A couple. I was, yeah, I was talking to the ref. I was like, he just kept his fingers in my eye. I was like. I look at the ref like, where are you going to say something? <laughs> but were you running into the fingers or was he just? No, it, no, 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 it kept me, it kept me, it kept me at bay. It kept me from wanting to run at that and, and the, um, that, what you call it? The, that, what they call that kick? The, um, the kick where they kick your knee. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I forgot what the you call it. The oblique kick? Yeah, I hate that. I hate that damn uh, kick. How do you call that? The oblique kick. Oblique kick. Yeah. yeah. Did he do it to you? Yes. A yeah. couple of times. But I, I could, because of the distance, you know, I could move and I could yeah. avoid that. Yeah. In terms of that fight, that was your first ever uh, submission <clears throat> loss. Did that change the way you looked at fighting or change the way you trained? Not at all. Not at yeah. all. I I knew that I I, I was holding the, the choke for the ma the maximum. No, I could hold, I could hold, then was out of a sudden I slapped. Yeah. From from like two thousand and three all the way to two thousand and nine, I think, undefeated, right? Yes. And no one could beat you. Yes. Like just you know, there was something about the style and the way you, you fought. It was so, so strategic. You picked people apart. You kind of played at your own speed. You kind of like controlled the fight. Yeah, because I brought something new for the MMA. You know, people, they don't know karate. They only like, they, they make, made a joke in karate, you know, especially in Brazil, you know, because karate means like, uh, uh, in Brazil, karate but they use the same words to have a different uh, means, like karate, mm. kara means like man. Mm. No, karate, men have, karate means men have, kind of like, men have a car, men have a woman, mm -hmm. but men haven't, you know, like, it's, yeah, it's yeah, hard yeah. to explain yeah. English, yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. like a joke. Yeah. yeah, It's like making fun of karate. So mm -hmm. for me, it was like, because I, I have my background in karate, so I think I think like, hey man, I have to prove that that's that's a lie, you know, that's not not real. Because the way that I trained, the way that my father taught me karate, was a different way. Because people only know about karate sports, which you see in the Olympic game, which you see like in competition where you have just a point karate. That's not so effective if you prepare for MMA. Mm -hmm. So, but the way that I trained since it was kid is different no my father was a japanese a real japanese he went to brazil in 1968 he was 22 years old he challenged himself he, he, he went to a boat 45 days a boat to brazil and by himself with 100 dollars in his pocket no he was very like in japanese we call yamato tamashi means like the old spirit of japanese guy like the guy that helped you to build japan again after mm -hmm. the war no they, they have this spirit yeah so for me it was different then i brought something different for mma the people they don't know they just they, nowadays everybody knows how to move how to know how to use the footwork 
Uh, you used to only see that in boxing, a little bit in kickboxing, not in Muay Thai, but then I think that's, I make every people like think differently and feel like difficult to fight me. Bear, I don't know if you how much you know, mm -hmm. but I'm sure you know a lot because you, you, you love the sport, but he was the first to do karate successful in MMA, the first one. Like now you got, who you got now? Um, Wonder Boy. Yeah, Wonder, Wonder Boy. Boy. Yeah, yeah, but he was a, he was the first one and a lot of us wasn't really ready for it. Mm. And and just not only did he know karate, you know, he he was like really, he was really good at it. He made, he made it work for him. And it's, it's difficult for, you did, what kind of karate was it? Kurokushin? I did Shotokan. Oh, Shotokan. Shotokan. But it's not the Shotokan sports Shotokan. No, we do martial arts Shotokan. It's kind of the same, but mm -hmm. the way that we train was pretty much different. What, what do you think the biggest advantage of training karate is over people that we see today that just train jujitsu and then boxing and then striking and they don't have like a real martial art behind them? I think so. To be honest, if you train karate like a regular karate, that, that's not going to work, man. Got it. That's not going to work. Got it. No, they, they have like the old system of training. You have to be different. You have to use the real distance, the real time. Like I said, you know, if you walk in the principle of fighting, it's different. Mm -hmm. People, most of the time, they, wor they worry about the, the rules. Like rules, I mean like you put your hand here, you turn your mm -hmm. hand, you know, uh, hit so hard. That's important. Yeah. But not, that's not everything. You have to work on the principle, distance, time, fake, uh, one step ahead. You know, all this stuff I've been creating because nobody taught me that. My father taught me some things, a lot of things actually, but nobody put that in in context, like everything together and see principles. No, you have to use the distance one step. At, like a lot of the principles that people, that serve for every type of fighter. No, for example, if I say one step ahead, one step ahead, people, they don't know what I mean, one step ahead. One step ahead, you'll be ready before the guy. No, always. Like I said, if I'm here with my gun, you're not going to pass, you're not going to cross the street because I'm going to shoot you. Okay, but the moment I drop my hand and try to move to the side, that's the moment you're going to cross the street because I'm not going to be ready to, to shoot you. So one step ahead, you always hear. If the guy moves to the side, you're always ready, always ready because sometimes we've been like sloppy in, the, in our movement, so like lazy because you get tired. So the guy stay there ahead of you so he can hit you. Mm -hmm. If you see that small detail in every fight, you can find that 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 principle that I'm mentioning here. Did you understand what he just? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of people too. They get so caught up on the disciplines of the technique, like hand by your head, and and, and yes. this knee comes yes. here first. It's yeah. important, yeah. but not everything. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, how 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 is your karate the way you taught yourself and the way you put it together? How do you think it benefited though from other types of karate, like the the actual martial art of karate? I feel like if we were to go down the street and go to a karate class, it's like, you're not going to be able to use that against Rampage no, in a fight. No, for right? sure not, for yeah. sure not. So I think if you, like, know how to control the distance, distance is one of the first principles, one of the most important. Controlling you know? the distance. Controlling the distance, knowing the distance, you know. There is nothing wrong if you get close to the distance. But the problem is when you get there without knowing that you're there, you know. Sometimes you get you, you in front of your opponent, but you stop but if you stop on purpose, that's good. But if you stop because you don't know, you pretty much lost, you're gonna get hit, man. So people, they don't know that. No, they stay there because they get tired, they stopped, so you stop moving. No, you have to know, like I said, everything is good. It depends the way they use, no? Short distance is good, but you have to know that I'm, I'm gonna get in the short distance. The fight has to be in your watch, not in the opponent's watch. You know what I mean? Like, I want to move forward, then I move forward. I want to move backward, then I move backward. I want to, like, get in the short distance. Don't you go to get in the short distance because you want to be there, no? Not because your opponent put pressure and get the short distance, no. That means you won't step ahead, too. Yeah. How, how were you when you started training karate with your dad? I was four years old. Damn! Yeah, <laughs> but but you know, like my the main concern of my father wasn't to form a champion, no, to 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 build a champion. Yeah. His main concern is to form a man, a good man, with character, with uh, respect, with discipline, stuff like that. No, because we all know that everything passed, man. 
Now, one day we were a champion in UFC. Nowadays, it's a different moment. Everything passed. The speed go away. Uh, the, the strength go away. One day, you're going to lose that. But the principle, you have to carry with you, man. Because if you have the principle, you can do a business. You can do a like relationship. You can do everything. Because you have a word. You have respect. You have everything. Wow. That's, that's, the, way, that's the way that I think. You know? So martial arts is more about that the only technique. Because technique, if you have uh, 200 students in your academy, how many have, how many students are going to be a professional fighter? You know, man. Yeah. Barely. Yeah. <laughs> be lucky one or two. Yeah. One or two, probably. Yeah. No, the most. Maybe. Yeah. The rest, they're going to be a doctor, they're going to be a businessman, they're going to be an engineer or something or, or whatever, man. But they have to carry with them like that stuff, no? Yeah. That's the true essence of <coughs> of of martial arts. See, I I never consider myself a martial artist because you know I started wrestling. You know, Americans we don't consider wrestling a martial art. Then I started with um, jujitsu, which is a martial art. But I never got good enough at it where I could say, "Oh, I'm a martial artist." I always said, "Like, oh, I'm I come to the sport a brawler." I just had a different style, and, and just sitting here listening to you explain it, it gives me more respect for mm -hmm. for martial arts and, and karate. I already respected karate years ago when it's, once I had to train for you. I was like, oh, man, I got to respect this sport because, you know, like many other fighters, you remember back in the day when UFC first started, like different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And like that. Yeah. Who was that? That one guy coming there doing taekwondo and karate. I, yeah. I don't. I, yeah. There was one Japanese guy yeah. or, or another yeah. one. Yeah, and that's and that's what that's what happened with mixed martial arts uh, back in the day when the first when the UFC first started. You come in with one art, mm -hmm. and and you yeah. fought somebody with two versus boxer. Yeah, and and the arts that did well was wrestling, kickboxing, yes, uh, jiu -jitsu. and, and jujitsu. Boxing didn't even do good in the yeah. beginning, yeah. and then you brought you brought karate to the game, and then. I think um, uh, Car Parisian was the first one to bring judo. Into, oh yeah, 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 yeah. The heat, Car Parisian. He brought. He was the first person. To, he was trained by ju uh, judo Jean Labelle. He's a legend. Really? He's a legend in, in in it. So they was the first to 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 bring those martial arts over and and do well with it and and gain the respect of of um, MMA fighters. Yeah, because yeah. people they don't know the the history. You know, in Japan. <clears throat> Everything was pretty much together. But when the samurai era finished, the Meiji era started in about uh, 18, 1800. Okay. No, uh, yeah, 1800 something. 1868. 1868 year, the samurai era finished. The era, uh, Meiji era started. So the martial arts was pretty much forbid in Japan. Wow. You no, know, because they, they get in the different system, educational system, where they want to no no more like, you know, teach people how to kill other people, stuff like that. And because of that, in judo, it was jujitsu, the, the father of judo was jujitsu guy. He changed the name. He put judo. Do means uh, way, you no. Know? Jiu-Jitsu is more too aggressive. If people they don't know that the story, the story side of the martial arts. Then when they start to separate everything, they start to create a competition to spread around the world. You know, to to create a big name in judo, karate, taekwondo, stuff like that. They they start to put a lot of rules. So, but the rules says the training. Why? Because if you, if you, the competition don't allow you to use a footwork, a footlock, why are you going to train footlock? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the competition, the rules, you know what I mean? Like the rules of comp the competitions uh, 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 says what you have to train. Yeah, dictates the routine. Dictate, yes. Yeah. The competition dictates the training. For example, in karate, <clears throat> why are you going to hit the bag if it's a point karate? Like if you hit so hard... You're gonna be out of the competition. Not gonna mm. keep going to the another. Know what I mean? Like you're not gonna be a champion yeah. because you hit so hard. The guy. Why I'm gonna train? I'm gonna hit the bag to try to hit the guy. So that's start to make the martial arts weak. Mm. You no, know, like but in the other side, that spread around the world. They went to the the, the movies. They like create a big name in martial arts because you no, know, they create like a. 
a competition, uh, movies, stuff like that. So, did, you, did you watch the Karate Kid growing up? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Yeah, 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 everybody yeah. did. Had me want to train karate. <laughs> <laughs> did you? Did you like the the uh, remake they did on on um, the Cobra Kai? Uh, my my kids they watch they watch I did watch you didn't watch no a little you're, bit. you're not a fan of Cobra Kai huh no I like I like the show but you know what I mean like son, I'm busy with other things sometimes yeah, yeah did did you did you ever hear that um when they came out with Cobra Kai some people like went back and broke everything down and they said that Danielson was actually the bully. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. How, how you feel? Did you believe that? Or? Uh, maybe. <laughs> when you think about it, huh? <laughs> yeah, he, he, was, he was like a shit starter. He won, pulled the water over him in the, in the, in the, in the sink, and he yeah. hit. I understand him hitting on the girl. I didn't want to get off t- off subject. But no, come on, man. He's he's like the karate, the real life karate kid for me. I, <laughs> he is the karate kid. I know, I know. Did you did you ever do the crane? Did you ever practice the crane kick? <laughs> yes, no, but I, you know what I did with Brent Kutu, no? Yeah. yeah. That's my father taught me. You know what he said before the fight? He said, Yo, you're gonna fight with a veteran fighter, Randy Kutu. My father always study everything. No, Leo, let's work on that. Let's work on that. But my father is more aggressive than me. Way more aggressive than me. No, 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 no. Go kill the guy. No, like <laughs> <laughs> because it's Japanese, yeah. and I'm I'm more like no, no, no. Let's see because no, we are professional. Like no, I, I wanna like pretty much kind of no, no. I wanna win the fight. No, no, win the fight. No, kill the guy. Man. Like <laughs> that's the way that he thinks. You know? But the way that he thinks is not kill the guy. It's literally kill yeah, the yeah, guy. Like yeah. the yeah, way yeah. that you have to think. Yeah. You yeah. know. Then we train the crane kick because he said, you, ought to, you have to do something different. I do, why? Because this guy is a veteran fighter. He knows everything. So let's do something different. Then we start training. After the, the, the practice, let's repeat 50 times, 50 times. Again, again, yes, again. Then when Glover, when Glover went to my city, in my hometown in Brazil, where is he, which is in northern Brazil, he stayed there for two weeks. Then I hit Glove twice with that kick wow. in training. Did Bow. you knock him out? You knock him out? No, but he said, oh, Lord, Lord you almost break my, my teeth, man. <laughs> <laughs> then I said, I said, yo, you have to use that. You have to use that. Clever told you. Yeah, he said, you have to use that. That going to work. I didn't see the kick, man. How you did that? Then that was now in my head. Like, nah, man, I'm going to use. But like in fighting, you cannot think in. Like, you just do it. Yeah. If you train, you're going to do it. If you're not trained, you're going to start to think. Then, during the fight, I was there. Then I feel the moment. I think now is the moment. You know? and boom, kick, and I I nail. Yeah. You did that before Anderson Silva did it, right? Yeah. No, after. After. Oh, so Anderson. Oh, Anderson, Anderson did. In, oh, okay. Because Anderson, he, he was saying that, um, you know, uh, he didn't say it, but I think Steven Seagal said, oh, yeah, I taught him how to yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said that to me, too. Oh, my yeah, God. he said he that. Taught you <laughs> yeah, but he, he didn't do that. No, yeah. what happened yeah, was. Clear, because clear it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we was there in the fight week together with Steven Seagal. And Steven Seagal was watching my training during the week. And he saw me kicking, front kick. And he said, Lioro, I like that kick. It's a different kick. If you use that, it might work. And I did it. Know what I mean? Like, by my father, he was trained yeah, with me. Like, yeah. but he has some credit yeah. too. Yeah, because yeah. He's yeah, he's so easy. yeah. yeah he's, But did Steven Seagal teach you any technique? No, he was just trying to fix something. No, no, don't do that. Kick that. You know, move to the side. But especially that kick, when he saw me doing that kick, he said, Lioro, I like that kick. You have to use that kick. No, that's what yeah. he said. I'm a, I'm a big fan of Steven Seagal, but I, I would like for you to go on the set of his next movie. <laughs> when he said when he said a line, oh, I like that line. Yeah, you should say the line this way. You should. <laughs> you trying to start chaos? What? What? I'm just keeping it one hundred. Like, how is Steven Seagal going to come into a, a you know watch a professional fighter? I know he's a martial arts guy, yeah. but he's gonna come and watch a professional fighter. Yeah, do this, then yeah, do that. Yeah. <laughs> did, did, did Steven Seagal actually know the technique? Like, did you feel he actually knows the, the martial art? No, he there's kn- a lot of videos of him on the internet. No, no, he knows. Yeah. He knows. Yeah. We, we, he knows the martial arts. He knows you know, how to hit the guy. He knows yeah. he's a heavy guy, big guy, you know. But, you know, martial arts are like a hot water, man. If you don't keep hitting the water, they're going to be cold. Mm. But I mean, like... 
if you don't train every day, you're not a black belt anymore. Stop anymore. training jujitsu yeah. for a while. Yeah. No, the technique's not gonna be there anymore. He's right. I haven't so. trained jujitsu that much no more. And I go and to Antonio McKee's gym and stuff like that, and I roll. I'm like, well, what the hell am I doing? Yeah, that's happening with everyone, man. Because yeah. you know you have to keep him warm in the water. This, this, the way that you went about training though for this crane cake for the Randy Couture fight and and things about karate, did it mainly just come from your dad, or did you have other trainers and sparring partners that added to it? No, no, no. Just came from my daddy. Yeah, wow. that's different things always come from my daddy. No, no. Let's do that. Let's because he's like a, he's a thinker guy. No, he think he like. For example, he when I fought uh, Quinton Jackson, he was watching Quinton Jackson's leg. He said, Len, "Let's see his leg. If it's a skinny leg, is a, 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 a no a, a, a strong leg. Let me see John Jones. For example, he has a skinny leg, but he's strong. But he's can." Then my father always, no, let's kick the leg. Let's kick the leg. You know, he, he likes to do that. Yeah, I, I was thinking about that too because he's like real skinny and bone. I wanted it, but I'm not too fast with kicks. So I, I think I kind of stayed away from it. I was worried about him taking me down. But you're really good on the ground. You probably, you, you are, you're not worried about people taking you down. Uh, no, no, not in MMA, no. Yeah. Not in MMA. Yeah, it's, it's interesting though because when it comes to fighting, like you've had some of the, most notable fights in, in MMA history. In 2005, in March, you fought BJ Penn yes. in K1. Yes. He came up like 30 pounds. BJ yeah. Penn's a good friend of mine. He, he was one of our first guests ever on the show. And, uh, you know, obviously he's a legend, one of the best ever, like yourself. What, what was the experience having to fight this guy? Like he's coming up 30 pounds plus to fight you in K1, you know? Yes, I, I was leaving Japan that moment. Wow. So uh, working for Antonio Noki, you know Antonio Yeah, Antonio yeah, yeah, yeah. Noki, yeah. I was working for him. And, you know, he passed away last yeah, year. Yeah, right? not too long ago. Yeah. yeah. Then one of his uh, uh, managers said to me, Lioro, in two weeks you have a uh, in two weeks you have a fight. Do do you want to fight? I said yes. <laughs> he said who? Say BJ Pence. Let's do it, man. Because you know, no money, nothing, no name, nothing. You have to accept everything. Then I went, went back to Brazil to have my training camp. Then I did training camp two weeks training camp. Then I come back to Japan to fight BJ Pence. Was a tough fight, man, because no, I was like uh, uh, heavy because I was in Japan for a while. Then I went to Brazil to do my camp, two weeks camp. But it is what it is, no, man. Like sometimes you have to just put your spirit and go. And it was a tough fight because I didn't expect him. BJ Penn was tough. He's a small guy, but he's tough, man. No. Yeah. Did, uh, what, what kind of job did you uh, do for Inoki? Uh, I was working. In Inoki in Japan as a fighter. Uh, but we didn't have a fight. No, he tried to put me fight in Pride. Yeah. But in that moment, Inoki in Pride was like head to head. Yeah. Like, I mean, they yeah. didn't have a good relationship. Did, no. did he ever slap you? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> right after my first fight, no, he did three three slaps. Oh, yes. It was a hard it was a hard. It was thing. hard, man, because I didn't expect that. No. I came down from I came down from, from the the ring. Then I was cleaning my sweat here when I he hit me hard. Like, <laughs> oh, two, three. I said, oh. <laughs> then I could not do anything. No, he is the, the man. Uh, yeah, I just yeah. accept everything. Bound hand. He said, thank you so much for the opportunity. That's that's like a that's like a Japanese thing that I don't understand. I, you know, I stole that from him. I was in Japan one time after one of my fights, and I saw him getting in the in the ring in the Pride ring. Or the K one ring, I think it was Pride, and uh, he 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 was talking to this older couple. I don't know if they was like politicians. I don't know, and he was finna slap the lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You saw that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The older lady, right? Yeah, you saw that one. And he's the glass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and after after that, he's she smacked him. She said something. Oh yeah, and yeah. She slapped she him. Back. And you saw his face. He's like, wham, wham, <laughs> smack the shit out of her. And she flew off the TV screen. <laughs> and then from that moment on, I've been slapping motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah. From that moment, I like I become a big fan of Enoki. And then that night, I went out and started slapping Japanese people. And and and, and now when I go, they, I'm known for that. There now when I I I, I go. People line up, and I slapped yeah. the, the longest line. I, I slapped the whole basketball team. A whole, really, yeah, a whole Japanese basketball. <laughs> I went like three students style. <laughs> and I, I, I did it in like the airport, and some white people around. And they was like, "What the fuck is this black dude doing?" <laughs> <laughs> but you know, do you know the story? No, no. Do you know the story behind the slap? No. <clears throat> that is, uh, in Japan, one guy that he really loved Antonio Naki, and he said. 
in Oxon, I have a kid, he's 15 years old, but he, he doesn't want to do anything, you know, he doesn't want to study, he doesn't want to train, he doesn't, how can you help him? He said, bring him him. Then when he bring the kid, he slap in the face. <laughs> yes. And the kid became a successful guy, you no, know, a rich guy. So then everybody in Japan knew about this story and said, hey, so they create like, you know, a story behind that. Everybody that Antonio Knox left the face is going to have a success. Wow. He's That's success. why they, they make a line to receive this. this wow. You know what I mean? like, That's a good story. He slapped some success in a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> now you have a story to come. Yeah. No, no, come here. Yeah. If they slap you in the face, you're going to have a success. Shit, I'm, I'm the fucking opposite. Last person I slapped went broke. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, he was also very famous for the Muhammad Ali thing. Yeah, in 1975. That, yeah, yeah, and that's that's actually a, a crazy moment. A lot of people don't know about that. Oh uh, yeah, a lot of people don't know. They 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 it didn't get that much press in our day and age. It was it was a big thing back there. Another thing that people don't know about uh, Tonyo Inoki is that uh, I think he he took hot sauce from Brazil to Japan. Yeah, I didn't know that. You didn't know that? No. Yeah, that's what that's what I heard one time. Other day, uh, he was very successful with that. He imported um, uh, hot, hot, so hot sauce. Hot sauce. To Japan, they didn't have hot sauce. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't you didn't know, know that. that? I didn't know that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Unless somebody gave me like a false story. <laughs> but, you know, I was a big fan of Inoki. He had like this very <laughs> unique look to him, the big chin, big chin right? Yeah. And when I was working for Pride, it was this one guy that worked behind the scenes on the cameraman. And he looked just like Inoki. He had the same chin. I had never seen anybody else with a chin like that. I don't know if it's like a, uh, I don't know, like a genetic thing. But I was like, hey, you Inoki's son, huh? He was like. No, he didn't speak that much English. He was like, no. And then I had a translator. Actually, I said, hey, do you know who your dad is? <laughs> and he didn't. He did. He didn't know his dad. <laughs> and you know, you know, he was super famous yeah, over super there. Yeah, super famous. Yeah. Yeah, so, man. So Rampage found the, a son. I think I found some of his illegitimate <laughs> kids. <laughs> hey, think about it. Think about it. Think about it. If I'm, if I'm going to be super famous in Japan... I would have a whole bunch of black ass kids over there, <laughs> man. Japan, yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> you know, I love. Rampage loves girls. I loved it, and Japanese girls was my favorite. You know, I, I married yeah. a Japanese girl. You know, I knew that. I knew that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I love them. I, I've never, I've never been treated so well before in my life. I remember when I was coming home from the gym, my bath water be ready and. My food be right there, and she'll she'll put me in the bath. And she'll get me a bath, dry me off, put my clothes on, and I sit there and eat. Food. I was like, I'm married this one. <laughs> I, I love that. Different than American, right? Oh man, what so 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 different. And yeah. one thing I liked about her is that uh, she told me that her uh, her family is um, her, her name is Imoto. Mm -hmm. So so um, her family was um, um, she's come from a family of samurai. Oh yeah, yeah. So my yeah. Uh, my kids with her are. They're like descendants of samurai, so I, they used to call me Kokujin Samurai. Kokujin, Kokujin, yeah, yeah, Kokujin yeah, is a yeah, black guy. Yeah, yeah. Kokujin Samurai. That, that means black guy. Yeah, Kokujin is, yeah. is, is black guy. You, black he guy. would be Hakujin. What's that mean? White guy. Oh, I like that. Hakujin. Yeah, Hakujin. Hakujin. And but but Hakujin but you know, I only speak a, a few words in, in Japanese. I couldn't figure this out. So black people is Kokujin, but Korean people is Kun Kokujin. I don't understand why yeah. they, why they sound like black guy like Kun Kokujin because Jin means. Uh, 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 which country come like Brazil? Brazil Jin. Yeah. Coco Jin. That's why I think Coco Jin is like a bad guy. I, yeah, I, I I speak Japanese, but just a little bit. You no, know? yeah. I, I, yeah, I wanna, yeah, I always got confused, like because they put they made they made Korean and black people sound kind of similar. Yeah, 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 yeah. Coco yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Coco Jin. Prejudice, kind of prejudice, maybe you know. Yeah. From Japanese guys, no. Yeah. That, the way that they speak, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Was there was there a lot of training at the time for you when you were in Japan training for MMA and martial yes. arts? Yes, I, I I was by myself in Japan and I was training different academies in Japan. I was living in, in Oxon Academy. They they doing pro wrestling over there. I'm the unique guy doing MMA, but I live there. And then I no, mm -hmm. I take the the train, go to another gym in Tokyo. That was my daily routine in Japan. Do you ever train with Sakuraba out there? No, Kosaka. You know Kosaka? Remember Kosaka is mm. a guy, he fought in pride too. Mm. Nakamura. Oh, yeah, no, I remember Nak that. Nakamura, yeah. 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 It's, a, it's a unique thing because a lot of MMA fans consider you to have one of the most, if not the most challenging MMA record ever because you fought so many fighters in their prime. And we see a lot of fighters today, they, you know, they, they duck their opponents, they protect their records, uh, you know, 
you really didn't have that. You didn't experience that. You fought everybody. You fought the best of the best. You never ran from fights. Like, do you feel like the UFC in today is a little bit different from when you were fighting compared to the fighters you had to fight and the challenges you had? In what what aspect do you mean? In like, in like you you always took the best fights. Like, do you feel yeah. today some of the top UFC fighters are are running from the best fights? Do you feel like they don't take the best fights? Um, maybe, maybe, but you know, it's a business. Nowadays, it's more business than before. We all know that. So, but in my mind, it was always, I have always that thought. Like, if you want to be the champion, you cannot run away from anybody, no. Like, because when you have that, that mindset in your, sorry, in your mind, you can face the problem. Even if you bring that to your life, like, you can face any problem because, you know, you don't, like, escape from anything, you want to face everything. So I've been doing ice bath every day. My my ice bath is so cold. And people, they don't understand why you do that the first thing in the morning, every day. I do that. 7.30 in the morning, I wake up, I do the ice bath. Then I learned that. I learned from the martial arts the same thing, the same principle, no? Uh, at, the, at the beginning, I didn't want to be there. Like, I was scary, you know? Then as, as time go, went by, I learned that, no, why I'm doing cold plunge because I want to get the benefits from the cold, right? So if I get in the, the ice bath, I should like to be here. I should like to be here. I have to you no know, be like pleasure to be here. Like I want to, I want this environment. I want to feel that when I change my thought, everything change. But now I miss my ice bath. When I go there, so I'm here, I live in Florida now. I wanna wanna be back home just to get in my ice bath because I know how that can help my mind. You no, know? it's like a fight. When you have a problem in your life, the same thing. No, I wanna I wanna fix that problem. Don't try to be away that problem. No, I wanna fix that problem. You change. Imagine you have someone in front of you and you say, "I wanna fix that guy." The guy gonna feel the energy. You know? the guy gonna feel like the like it's different. But if you Try to figure out, no, this guy is big. This guy, I don't know if, no, 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 no. Who is the strongest guy? That guy, I want, I want that guy. Forget money, forget everything. When you have that mindset, you change everything. If you use that to your life, that's when you use martial arts to your life. You know what I mean? Like, no, what is the problem that I have in my life? Hey, let's go, man. I want to, like, no, do that. I, I like that problem. You're going to change. You're going to solve the problem just because you change your mindset. But if you be like, hey, how can I figure it out? No, no, no. That's important. That's the way that I think. You know what I mean? That's the way I think that can help us and help other people to use martial arts. Sometimes you don't need to be a martial artist to train every day. But if you use that concept from martial arts, you can have a better life. It's very wise, bro. Unreal. That's deep, huh? Unreal. Yeah. This is one of the best podcasts I think we've had. Yeah. I mean, it's good to to hear what you actually think and how you look because we see that in your career. You faced everybody and you faced them head on. The best of the best after losing a fight, coming back from a win. Like you never, you know, you never ran from anything. And it seems like every fight you win into, even if people go back and watch the tape, you really took your time to figure out the opponent, try to pick them apart piece by piece. You weren't one of these guys who brawled you didn't run into yeah. a fight just trying to kill people i think you really have this martial art to you i, I appreciate you talking about it like that because i feel now when i watch your fights I, I i could feel that energy yeah like, i'm gonna figure this guy out i'm gonna stand right in front of him i, I got a question I, I i pay attention to a lot of things and um one time i, I watched you um walk into the cage and i saw you thumb yourself like this yeah no, that's because I, I I used to have a hernia here. <laughs> <laughs> Are you just checking yeah, me? Yeah. I, I put inside. No, <laughs> I put my hernia inside. <laughs> I was outside. How do you know? How do you see that? I, I, because I'm, I did that constantly. Yeah. Uh, I saw you doing one fight. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I saw I saw you doing one fight, and, and me like a lot of times I like to think what's going on inside a fighter's mind. Like I'm I'm very I'm very weird when when it when it when it comes to this, and and. Um, and I've watched I watch a I watched a few a few of your fights. I've always been a fan of you. I've, I watched a few of your fights, and I and I and I saw him doing that. I was like, I like I was thinking, like, what what is that? Is that like for him some to remind him to to do something <laughs> yeah. or something? You know, <laughs> it's good. Yeah, yeah because I, 
the main, the moment you said that, I, I remember. Yeah, yeah. Because I used to have. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you would fight fights with hernias popping out? Yeah, no, I put my, my hernia inside, you know, because it was bothering me sometimes, no? <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't care. You'd fight with the hernia. Yeah, yeah. I'd fight the hernia after I had a surgery, <laughs> after what, a lot of fights. Was that one of the worst things you had to fight with? Yes. Yeah? Yes. I can imagine. That's got to hurt. Man, you, you'd be surprised what, what, what fighters go through. Um, I was training with um, Josh Barnett years ago, and he's, and back when I was 205, and he's a big guy. And, and one time I got the best of him. Whenever I got the best of him, I knew he was going to come back crazy. And, and one time he just clinched me and kneed me right in the, in the rib. And he broke my sternum. Really? Oh, yeah. Wow. And it's never, you can't heal, how you heal your sternum up? You can't put a cast on it. So I've been fighting like that for years with it. You know, that little bone right there? I'm fatter yeah. now, so I can't feel it. <laughs> but back back when I was thin, I could feel that little bone right there. It's like the worst. I remember when I, I had to fly later on that day. I was like, oh, my God, what's this? And I bent down, put something under my, my seat. I was like, man, he broke my, my sternum. <laughs> Stuff. It's crazy. It's crazy. In, in terms of, like, your, uh, your, your path to get the belt, when you beat Rashad Evans, I think it was uh, 2009, something like that. 2009, 2009, yes. 2009, and you got the belt. You were coming off this undefeated record. Well, you get the belt, and then you go face Shogun. Same thing, 2009, October, and you win. Yeah. What What went into that rematch with him? Like, one, why did you take the rematch? I feel like there's so many other people that should have been able to fight you. But why, why did you take that rematch? And then what, what happened in that rematch fight? So, uh, uh, I have my, my own uh, way that you think about that, no? UFC had five categories in that moment. Only five categories. No, 205 heavyweight, 185, uh, 170, and 170, 155. Only that. All the champions either had a uh, uh, fought already. It was at the end of the year. My fight against Shogun was October, like the end of October probably. Then UFC didn't have a fight for the end of the year, no. They, they asked me to fight in the end of the year because BJ Payne, he, he would fight in November. Mm -hmm. Anderson had a surgery. Brock Lennon had a problem, issue, some issue. They didn't have any title fight for the end of the year. Then I accept that fight, but because we didn't have any, any uh, contender, Shogun was, because the fight was closed, they said, no, let's put the fight... And I accept the fight, but I broke my hand. I had a surgery in that fight. I said, I don't know if I can fight. Let's see the doctor. If it's broken, maybe I cannot fight. And it was broken. And then I said, hey, I said to everyone that you're going to fight December. So I already set up the fight. You have to fight against Shogun. I could put like other opponent, but because he said in the press conference right after the fight, no, let's go to the, the rematch. No, then we have the rematch in April, and I, I did a very good job in my camp, but I didn't expect that that punch. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I was thinking, like I was controlling the fight because the first fight, he he the strike that he used was kicking my leg. It worked at the end of the fight, but I owned the first fight, like the, the unanimous decisions. In the second fight, I was thinking maybe I don't know what strategy he he could came up. No, and then he surprised me with that punch. Of course, he trained that. No, he, yeah. you cannot like say that was a luck because he trained that, and he deserved it to be a champion. It was was good good moment. So, can you talk to me about the Rashad fight? Your family and your dad and yeah. in the interview. <clears throat> So there is one episode that happened in Rashad's fight. When I fought Rashad, I won the fight. And my father was in my corner. You know, I brought my father to my corner for this fight because I knew it was a title fight, a very important fight, a very important moment of my life. And the moment I knocked Rashad down, you know, out, and my corner, everybody was celebrating the victory. And my father was sit, sit still, he just watching and did that, you no, know, like Mr. Miyagi. And one reporter saw that. And he asked me, Lioro, in the press conference, I would like to interview your father. I said, why? Because I didn't know that too. You no, know, I was in the middle of the hitting, like the, the fighting, the celebration. 
No, because everybody, your brothers, your corners, everybody was celebrating your victory, but your father, he didn't do anything. He was just sitting still. He kept sitting and just moving his head. Why? <clears throat> Then I asked my father, hey, daddy, why you did that? He said, no, Leo, you know why? Because I am a martial artist and I have a lot of students in Brazil. I'm like kind of like educate them, like teach them. So I wouldn't like if I saw Rasha's father celebrating the victory over my kids because the, the knockout represents the, the death. Like, no, like you, you, you kill somebody. Like knockout represent that because you put the guy to sleep. For the show is good, but in terms of respect, I wouldn't like to see Rasha's father. So I think... If I don't like to see other guy doing the same over my kid, like if it was happening to my kid, I prefer to celebrate when we get in the locker room, no? Because some, there is one story that's used. The samurai always, they are hungry, but they put the toothpick, toothpick in the mouth. Like nobody needs to know what happened to you. You know what I mean? Like you can keep it with you. The right people can listen to you. Like, you can say something to the right people. But not everybody. I'm hungry. No, 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 no. Keep that with you. That's important. That's the same concept that he used. No. I'm so happy because my my kid is a world champion. That's good. But I don't need to celebrate that because I have respect to other father. No, I I wouldn't like the same. If I see that, I, I will be, like, disappointed. So I prefer to be like that and celebrating inside my room. My room. Wow, that's, that's powerful. So that's, that means that martial arts is that, you know what I mean? Like, so I think the world needs more action like that, you know, because we can have a better world. I have nothing against trash, tech, uh, trash talk. I think that can be important for the sport. I respect that, you know, because that's uh, entertainment as well. People must understand that but if you have like uh, if you in your real life doing the right things you know what I mean like that's the way that I think you can like contribute to the world Unreal. you're not gonna curse to the world you know what I mean mm -hmm. people most of people they don't think like that when you put your head in the pillow at every night you have to think you have to ask yourself am I cursing the world or I mean am I contributing the world No, every day. That's important man. because if you put that, you're gonna be a better man other day. You know what I mean? You're gonna be a better man other day. That's man. what we need. Now, right? now I feel bad because um I did the reality show with Richard Evans after that, <laughs> and I made fun of him. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you knocked him out. <laughs> so that. <laughs> did you laugh though? Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I said he was talking, but he started it though. He was talking shit about me. I oh, said he started. Yeah, he started. <laughs> and I said, I said, yeah, but Machida made you do the stanky leg. <laughs> did you know what I was talking about when I said the stanky leg? No, what I mean stanky leg. Oh, it's a, it was a dance. It was a popular oh, dance, dance back in the day. <laughs> the, way that the way he do, the way he did his leg, where he fell over his neck. <laughs> It's me, man. <laughs> I'm not, now I, I just gave us a speech about bringing joy to the world, and you're over here being a bully. <laughs> no, but he's authentic. Here. But he's a hey, good guy. He's man. the Thank realest. You, man. He's, he's the realest. The realest. He's the most I like authentic that. guy. Yeah. I like that. We, we didn't have no no problems in our press conference or anything. Yeah, it was all course, respectful, huh? Yeah. No, he's so respectful. Yeah. Really? Yes, because he know how to entertain people, which is good, important. Like I just told you. But remember, we have the the waiting. The, the way the, 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 yeah. we kind kind of like uh, had some like you no know, like you tension tension yeah. tension. Yeah. Then he pushed me a little bit. Then I I went from then he and after he had, he said to add my manager. He said, "Hey, say Leonardo that uh, I like to do that." But yeah, I'm gotta, sorry, but that's yeah, good. Really? That's good. Yeah, respectful, very yeah, respectful. But, yeah, the reason why I had to do that with him, I had to. Do a little something because to, to be to be honest, like it's for me, it's easy to sell a fight with people and stuff like that. But it, man, we didn't have no problems. We never had any problems. Very respectful, and I respect him because he come from pride. I come, I, I came from pride, so I wanted to sell some tickets. Yeah, I get yeah. paid, paid for you. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Did, did the UFC ever ever get mad at you for not really starting too much chaos? <clears throat> no. 
No. No, they don't care. They don't yeah. they don't tell you to do or say yeah, anything. Yeah, they don't they don't no. do anything. Yeah. yeah. They let you kind of just be yourself and do yes. you. Yeah. Yes. You never felt like you needed to go try to sell tickets or go crazy and try to like You know, yes, of course everybody wants more money. Who who doesn't? Yeah. But no Rampage, he's a brawler, man. No, he came mm-hmm. where he, he has his background, no? Mm-hmm. I have my background in like my father, like you know what I mean? Like I have a different background, like martial artist more. So I have to represent that in the middle of the cage, you know what I mean? In the yeah. middle of like show the respect, to show all the 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 mindset, you know, bring a different but you know, I respect everyone, man. Everyone's different. Imagine if you only has have people like your rampage. Yeah. You'll be a cow, chaos. Yeah. Only like Leo, you'll be a chaos. No, like it's not gonna be good. Entertainment's like that. Everybody's balance. different. Any we have respect and accept everybody. Yeah, right? I, and I think the fans really res- respect. It. He didn't have to do any of that to yeah. to sell tickets because you know that was, that was it. that was the energy that he he brought to the sport, like uh, you know a whole new level of respect and stuff like that. The fans, they MMA fans are the best fans in the world. Yeah, they get it. They that and they understand. They understand. Yeah. yeah. What. As a fighter like yourself, middleweight, light heavyweight, you know, in the UFC, you obviously fought the best talent. What are your thoughts on guys like Alex Pierre moving up and now dominating two different weight divisions? He's a beast, man. I've been training with him sometimes. He's a beast. Where do you train with him? Uh, in Glover's, Glover's place. In Danbury? In, in Danbury. And also he went to my, my place too with Glover. Because Glover and I, we are very close. No, Still? Still. Really? Sometimes we get together and we training with Alex and training. He knows how to fight. You know, he, he's a beast because people know he's kind of awkward sometimes. His movements look only he can do that move. You no, know? he kicks like that. But like I said, you no, know, he follows the principle. He know the distance. He know the time. He know how when hit, how to hit, and he hits hard, man. hard. He's a big guy. He's a tall he's a big guy. He's yeah. six four. And he weighed 185 in UFC, the first fight, the first four fights in UFC. And now he's 235. He walk around 235. Oh, my God. 6'4", 235, and moves like Six that. 6'4", yes. Is that, that's like Nicky Rod. Yeah, yeah. No that's, way, Nicky Rod is a big guy. N- Nicky Rod's a 6'3". 6'2". Oh, he's, two, six, two. he's like lower Oh, okay, six, but he's yeah. still like 230, though. he's 230. Yeah. But I guess you taller, 230 looks kind of different. Because he looked big on TV. I never he, seen him big, in, in person. Yeah, we just had Nicky Rod in here. The, the yeah, I know Nicky Rod. Yeah. yeah, he's Nicky good. Rod. He's good. You follow, you follow like, strictly jiu-jitsu? Yes. Yes, couple fights. couple fights. Go to Ryan, Nicky yeah. Rod. Yeah. You know, I like these guys. Do you, do, you, uh, do you watch the um, Bare Knuckle? I help Mike Perry, Mike Perry for his... For a fight against Luke Rockwood. Uh, we trained together. Wait, what? <laughs> Mike Perry, when he yeah. fought Luke Rockwood. You were his training partner? I was training partner of Mike Perry, yeah. No way. How yeah. did that happen? Yeah, because we live in the same city, you know? We training at Fusion Academy. What so, city is that? Uh, Orlando. Orlando. So Mike Perry lives there. Yeah. So he asked me, Leo, can you help me? Of course, man. I can help you. <laughs> so oh. were you his training partner, his coach? Were you I trained. I did, tra- uh, yeah, I did a couple, I think... Four times we did sparring together. Wow. And yeah. what did you think about him having to fight a guy like like Luke Rockhold? <clears throat> because, man, like I said, the rules of the competition, no, it's so like you start like that, only punch, no, man, like he, no gloves. And that helps a lot, Mike Perry, because he's crazy, man. He's strong, hard, but heavy punches, no? Yeah, yeah. And did he, you spar against him? Yes. With no gloves? No. No, no, uh, they do. They you guys use yeah, gloves. Yeah. They use gloves. Gloves. Is it MMA gloves or boxing no, gloves? No, boxing gloves. Offer, I, I thought that um bare knuckle guys would spar with MMA gloves on. I never see that. I, I've seen Mike Perry do it because I, I treated <laughs> That's what I thought. I never Yeah, because yeah, that yeah. makes sense, right? Yeah, yeah. I never see it. <laughs> it makes sense though because yeah. you want to like try to simulate the the knuckle, right? Like how do, how do they not break their hand? I don't know, man. I I hit the I hit the wood every day because I train every day. You hit no. the what? You hit the wood. I hit the wood every day. Yeah, there is one wood in Japanese called Maikyuara. It's a, a very traditional uh, okay. element in karate. No, I hit the wood every day because it's a therapy for me. You know what I mean? Like when I warm up to do my yeah. Look at his knuckles. Yeah, what? Are those are broken or are those? No, because I hit that. I hit. No. Hey, hey, hey! Oh. Let him touch your knuckle. <laughs> touch the man's knuckle. Jesus. Is, is both of your knuckles look like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my. Oh, my God. I've never seen that in person before. But it's yeah. just scar tissue, built-up tissue. Yeah, that- because sometimes you scratch your your 
Yeah. Yeah. But I like to hit, you know, because if you hit, you're not going to break your hand. You know? <laughs> He's hitting the table. Yeah, because yeah. most of the fight, they, they fight without yeah. gloves, they... They break hands. Is it mainly the knuckles that get Maybe damaged the or big the knuckles. wrists? Oh, big the big knuckles. knuckles. Yeah. Would yeah. you do bare knuckle fight? Would you ever do one? I, I, I never did. But or would you be interested? Uh, it depends, right? <laughs> we're, we're hearing some... What about some, you? <sighs> you got to be a big paycheck. I, <laughs> I don't yeah. think it's worth it for me unless yeah. it's like... A, I don't think it's worth it. Yeah, it's not, unless it's like a big paycheck. What's a big paycheck? Anything over two million is a big paycheck for me. Oh, I was gonna say like five hundred grand or something. Oh hell no! Come no. on, no, that's too yeah. low. Five hundred grand for a bare knuckle though? No, just get a guy out of there real quick. No, no, yeah, two no. million. Oh, that's anything nice. two million and above. pay per view points. Yeah. yeah, anything anything above two two million above, I'd be like, okay, yeah. I, I I hear you. I'd be like, then I'd be like, all right, who's the opponent? You know <laughs> yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You versus Vanderlei and bare knuckle. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> that's, 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 that actually is enticing. Yeah, it would go crazy. We we heard a lot of rumors recently of a potential rematch or or a match with Luke Rockhold and, and Karate Combat or Bare Knuckle. You guys are going to get a couple million each. No, uh, is that true? I never, nobody talks to me about that no. yet. Yeah. Has someone a rumor, rumor. Has someone offered you money about to fight Luke? No. No. Not yet. But that, that Karate Combat, you, you saw, you like that? I like that, but you know. Like you, man. You yeah. have to offer a good big paycheck. Is that karate with like some mixed martial art rules? I think I've seen some highlights. I haven't. No, that, that's a real like. Uh, it's like MMA without going to the ground. Okay. You know what I mean, like, like so because no you, ground. Okay. No ground, but there is no no elbow. Oh, but you can clinch. Clinch. Yes, clinch. You can. You can get so it's kind of like Muay Thai. You have five seconds on the ground. You have five seconds, actually. Oh, okay, see, so that's hit. why I was confused. Yeah. I did see them. Okay, okay. but yeah. they kick them when they're when they go down. You have five seconds to hit the guy to kick the guy. That's it. But not not kick the face. Kick the body. Wow, on the ground. That's on the a ground. Lot of rules to remember. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, it's it's good. Yeah, I think have it's you very done interesting. One? No. Would you do one? Same thing, money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course. Money talks, yeah. man. Well, for you guys, you guys are legends. You don't need a fight, but I, it makes sense. It's just a unique rule set. Would you be willing to go do all these different style rule sets like a karate or MMA? Yes, or bare yeah. yes, yes. You still want to fight? Yes, it depends, but yes. Yes. How well, old are you now? A 45. Oh, same age? Yeah. Oh, what, what month you were born in? May 30th. Oh, damn, you older than me. Yeah. What about you? Uh, June 20th. Yeah. Yeah. June 20th. Yeah. My wife, June 20th. Oh, oh Gemini. Gemini. Yeah. Oh, you the Gemini the, too. Yeah, Gemini. Yeah. Damn, May thirtieth. Yeah. That's your birthday. Yeah. So you won the belt like a few days before your birthday. Yes. The first time. Yes. Yeah. May twenty fourth. Yeah. May twenty third. May twenty fourth. May twenty fourth. Yeah. Wow. That's insane. Yeah. And and when you go look at like your career, and then you obviously look at like the move to Bellator. What was the decision making going into that? Because you were already so decorated in the UFC. Yeah, you know. People, they don't know what happened. So, I had my last fight against in UFC was against Victor Belfort. So, it was my last fight in contract. But the UFC let my contract run. Like, they, they didn't, you know, they let the contract. So, they, we, we didn't have a chance to renegotiate the fight, which is good. But... My contract was old contract. So in my contract, there is a clause that I could go to another event and talk. Then I have a chance to meet uh, people from Bellator, Mike Kogan, nice guy, and, and the president. So we had a meeting, and they said, Lioro, if I pay you what you want, you would fight for Bellator? I said, yes, let's shake your hand. Then we shake your hand. Then... I went back to UFC and I said, hey, now I have a new offer from another event. So if you don't cover, but the UFC has the right to cover the purpose, the, the offer. And to match it. They have to the match the, the offer. Yeah. No, he has the, the right. Then UFC match the, the offer, but, you know, that's a very interesting story because I love UFC. I love to be there because 11 years fighting UFC. How many years did you fight in there? Uh, I'm bad with time. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Since 2000, at the end of 2006 till, yeah. fuck, I don't know. Same, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Then I, I didn't want to you know, leave UFC. I want to stay in UFC. I was so like, my, my heart was so break. But 
then I called my father <clears throat> and I said, hey, my father, uh, I have a new offer here, Bellator. Then I explained what, what happened. And he said, Lioro, then I asked him, what do you think? He said, Lioro, did you shake hands? I said, yes, I did. I did not, I didn't, I didn't answer. I did not answer you, man. No, like you already know everything. Because you know, principal have to be very, very obedient. If you shake hands, your words value wow. more than anything. I said, wow. no, I know that. I just want to hear your opinion. He said, my opinion is that. Then I went to Bellato. was good moment of my career too. No, like, then, but I was hesitating in my mind with myself. No, I mean, like, I love UFC. I want to be here as a great platform. But on the other side, I said, no. You did that. You have to, you know what I mean? You have to wow. keep your words. Let's do it, Lioro. Then, because I'm not thinking against Bellator. I love Bellator too. But you know, if you have 11 years in one place, you know everybody, you know all the system, you know, no? And I have a good relationship with, every, with everyone. And Dana White was always good with me, man. Like, you no, know, of course, he's a promoter. And I understand that, you no. Know, he, has, he has to do his job. Yeah. And I have to do my job. Mm -hmm. you, know, you have to separate because most of Brazil, they don't know how to separate that. You know? like they get confused and they like, hey, somebody's my friend. Okay, he can be your friend outside the business, man. Let's do business a business. You know what I mean? Like an American guy, they know. You, you guys know how to do business. Business, business. Let's do business. Then I learned that here in the United States. You know? So everybody knows that somebody, some promoter can like give you something, like yeah, compliment you, which is good, it's important. But sometimes he has to like mess it up. He has to say some bad things to promote the fight or yeah. other thing. If you don't understand that, better to be outside the business, man. You know what I mean? Like it makes so much <clears throat> sense. What, what did Dana White tell you when you ended up taking the Bellator deal? When I when I when I got the belt? Yeah. No, when you Not went Bellator. to Bellator. Ah, he said, Leo, I, I I write down him a message. And you texted him? He, I texted him. I said everything. Uh, then I, I'm going to keep my words. I explain everything. And he said, Lioro, uh, I, would, I would love to be you, uh, to have you here, but I understand your way. No, we f I fought for that. No, I fought to, to cover the, the offer. But it's your life. You have to choose. I said, thank you so much for all those years, and, but I have to leave. Man. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool that you you had that relationship though, right? Yes. That, uh, he was yes. he was kind of kind to you. I think you know, like I said, no, uh, in the we are in the the uh, rat race, like you know, then we forget some very important element in our life, the principles. As I said, in fight you have to follow the principles. In life, if you follow the principle, if you put principle in the center of your life, you're not gonna like you no. Know, sometimes you can you can make mistakes, but you fix right away. Sometimes you know you can like do something, but you can you can put, because you put the principle in the center of your life. Sometimes we put the, the money, if you put the money in the center of your life, you're gonna mess it up somehow, no? If you put like people in the center of your life, you're gonna mess it up somehow because you're gonna, so you're gonna surround, you're gonna do, you're gonna be like, but if you put the principle, it's like mean like you follow like, if you follow the principle, you follow God, kind of that, no? because the principle is everything, respect, honor, loyalty, stuff like that, man. If you follow that, you cannot make mistake. Or if you make mistake, you can fix right away. No, because sometimes we forget that. No, you just, we're in the middle of the rat race and you forget everything. You forget ourselves. we're not gonna forget everything. We're gonna forget everything, man. <clears throat> yeah. He's right. He, yeah, you 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 have to put that in perspective and think about it. He's one hundred percent right when he when, with what he's saying. Like, a lot, I know so many people that put money in the center. Yeah, and you, you see it. You see you see where they make mistakes. See where they mess up. I did it once. I started making a whole bunch of money. Oh uh, yeah, I, I did it. I, I never loved money and stuff like that. But you know, coming from a real poor background and stuff like that, and you never had this much money and. So now you, you focus on it, then you focus on um, people not stealing it from you and stuff like that. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a unique thing. I think right now, a lot of people in the world, because of the Jake Paul fights and uh, because of this uh, mainstream sports media and streaming, like there's so much quick money for all these one off events. And people are so focused now on the money. They don't care about training. They don't care about the art form. They don't care about climbing through the ranks. They just want money. They want to fight an influencer. They want to go to the Europe. They want to go KSI. So the world of MMA specifically is kind of in chaos because no one even knows where to go now. But also, they don't have principle they don't have a code you're, you're like a modern day samurai the way he yeah. talks yeah he lives by a code you know and, and you stay by that code a lot of people don't have a good family or a good support system and it shows because it shows in their training it shows when people are late it shows when people don't care about their friends when they leave a camp to go get more. well you know you know bear we all are human being we all all have the devotion feeling thoughts we all have that for me it's not easy like for you for everyone because when you put your money in the line, when you put your face in the line, when you put, you know what I mean, like you're famous, everything you put on the line, you, know, you want to escape. You, you don't want to pay the price. Yeah. Because pay the price, it doesn't mean like just to train it. No, pay the price means to face the, the, the problem. You know, like sometimes you have to face the problem and accept the situation. But why we suffer? Because we don't accept the situation. You know? If you see, if you suffer for something, is something that you don't accept in your life. Can be a death, can be a money, it can be some can be some opinion. Why you fight someone because they have a different opinion? Because you don't accept. You can you don't need to agree, but you have to accept the fact. You know what I mean? When you accept the fact, you're more calm. But I've been seeing people suffering a lot, like because they resist, they fight. Why, man? No, you you have to accept when you accept every come every time become because acceptance is one of a way to be like uh, 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 con your uh, to improve your connection no, with the the world with the universe. Mm -hmm. when, when if you don't accept, you're gonna suffer, man. For I, sure, you're gonna suffer. I agree with him 100. percent You know, our our country has been divided uh, so much recently because. People don't agree on the same thing, even with politics or yes. with with all these different things. Like we don't like if we don't agree with somebody now, now they're not your friend or yeah. And they need to throw that away. Of course, man. No, yeah. I mean like that's that's hard because I've been learned that through my journey. You know, like yeah. And I like to read and and learn. Hey, man. So sometimes, for example, if you are go if you go to Starbucks, you know, and you ask for a coffee. Then the cough comes cold. There is some people they don't accept that fact. It's a fact. The cough is cold, man. You just have to accept. It doesn't mean like you can have an action. I go, I go there, talk to the lady. Hey, can you change that for me? It's cold. Acceptance doesn't mean no action. It's different. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like I can accept the fact, but I have the action. Actually, if you accept, you can do the action easily. No, you can do everything faster. Than the faster. But people, they, they receive the coffee and they start to complain. Hey, no, they get involved in the problem. You know what I mean? Like suffering. No, no, just an example. Yeah, and everything great. happened like that no, in life. No, we want to fight. No, why this lady, do you respect me? Hey, man, go there, accept. It's cold, okay. What, have, what I can do with that? Can I change? Yes, I can. Let's go there and change. Life will be easy if you, you know if yeah, you do wow. that. Can you get the MMA fans on how to uh, advice on how to deal with misfortune and stuff like that? Because I'm on the same page with you. Because I know like um, something bad happened to you. Yeah, you know it's just is I, I feel like it's a test. Like yeah. life is a test on how you deal with it. Like like kind of like what you're explaining right now. Yeah, if fans if your fans follow me because of that, you said uh, no. Uh, if you can give fans some advice on how to deal with people yes, yeah, because yes. people watching how to deal with misfortune. Say something. Say something bad happened to you. Say you get in a car accident. Somebody make yes. a mistake and hit you and stuff like that. You know, I think the fans need because I'm learning a lot just by talking to you. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a little advice for the for the listeners, like how to deal with misfortune. Like maybe something bad happened. Maybe you know. Yeah, because you know what I mean. Like for example, that is one thing that I like to mention. Like. The problem, the problem is that not the problem. The problem is our judgment. You judge that's good or bad. You judge that. 
know what I mean? Because the other people can do can went through can go through the same situation and judge differently. How do we explain two twins brother going through the same situation, abused, uh, father alcoholic, hit his mom and everything? One guy has success, the other guy mm. messed up everything. How do we explain that? The way you perceive things change everything. You know what I mean? Like for you, that's a problem. For the guy, that's a challenge. For the guy, that's a st stimulate him to do better things. You know what I mean? Like the problem is our judgment. If you go to the winter time, you see the, the trees, all, all the leaves falls, but the trees don't complain that because they don't know it's a part of the life. But when life doesn't go the way that we want, we start to complain. No, like we start to do, no, that's not good for me. Why not good for you, man? It is what it is. No? Life is like that. 9%, 19%, and 9, zero, 9, 9% mm -hmm. of the things don't go your way. Don't go your way. That's why you have to accept that. You know what I mean? Like, Let's go, man. What do I have to do? But like I said, people think passivity, acceptance is like a passivity. No, it's different. What I can do, what I have here. Mm -hmm. I'll do my best what I have here. But I accept the fact. You no. Know? If I ask you, uh, uh, death, is bad or, or good? Everybody say, Death is bad, man. Nobody want. But imagine if nobody die. <laughs> imagine yeah. since the world exists, the nobody trillions. die. Trillions of people here, plants, dogs, nobody die. Nothing die. It'll be a chaos. The world will be chaos. He's right though. Yeah, Crazy. but yeah. when the when the when the death comes to you, yeah. you don't want to accept that. Yeah. No, but again, no, with me, no, 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 I cannot die, man. My neighbor can die, everybody can die, <laughs> but I cannot die. You cannot accept that. You know what I mean? Like, but when you accept that, it's okay. If it's my moment, man, what I can do. Are you afraid of death at all? Not at all, man. Not at all. I used to be, but now, you know, there is one sentence that my father he said to me every day. He said, every day he's in Brazil, I'm here. I call him, hey daddy, how's everything? He said, yeah, Leo, I'm doing I'm doing good. Today my last day. I did not understand that. Never, ever. What do you mean, Daddy? No, today is my last day. Since, since I'm here, always I got Yoro. Life is like that, with my kid. Every you say today is my last day doesn't mean you're gonna uh, uh, use all your money, go to parties, do crazy things. Not like that. Life is the last. Uh, today is my last day means. All things that you have to do today, do like your last day. Wow. You know what I mean, like, because you're going to put more effort. If I say, Rampage, today your last interview, man. You're going to give your best. You're going to care everything. You're going to scare the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's true. No, yeah, but it's that's true, true yeah. right? Yeah. Because yeah. you're going to care more. You're going to know. You're going to, you're going to, like, <laughs> when you say, hey, hey bye, bear, you're going to hug. Yeah. Like with energy and everything. You're not afraid to death, man. Why? Because I give my best in every single thing that I did today, man. Of course, I don't want to die. Nobody wants to die. Yeah. Nice. But if I have to, man, if no choice, okay, I have to accept that. You know, when, you, when you have that concept in your mind, we become stronger. We think the other way is, is the right way. No, when you have that, no, you live like in inner peace. But I mean, the inner peace is important because okay. happiness sometimes can depend the circumstance. No, if your father die, if somebody that you love die, you cannot be happy in that situation. It's okay, but you have the inner peace. Like I'm calm, I know, and I accept that. Yes. Let's Unreal. move on and do to the next. Yeah. I next think about that chapter. sometimes. Unreal. I think about it. If I if I die, Barry, you gotta be my you gotta be my homie. You gotta what you gotta do? You gotta grab my phone, delete all my my damn search history, and, <laughs> <laughs> real talk. And then what you gotta do is you gotta with my friend, you gotta stand outside and keep all the girls that I talk to away. 
I, uh, keep, I only talk to one girl. You yeah, keep yeah. one. I got you. <laughs> you got it. You don't yeah, want no cat fights. Talk to a lot of girls. <laughs> nah, <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Nah, they love you. No, nah, nah, yeah, I, I, I went to a bar one time. He had like 30 girls. I go, Rampage, what are you doing? No, nah, I'm just relaxing. I can see you're relaxing. You get 30 girls. <laughs> don't believe it. Don't believe it. <laughs> On Halloween, he had a, a wolf mask <laughs> <laughs> running around the streets howling. Ow! I go, what are you doing? No, no one's going to know it's me. No one's going to know you. 6'3 guy with the. How tall are you? 6'3. How tall are you? I'm 6'1. No, stop. I'm 6'1. You're man. wearing boots that have this much high platform. Show me your boots. 6'4. La- la- no, raise your leg. Boots. Raise your leg like Leota kicks. Raise your leg. <laughs> <laughs> raise your leg. Look at the boots. <laughs> <laughs> He's 6'5. <six five. laughs> yeah, 6'5. Hey, hey, to to uh, switch it up here as we kind of get towards the end of this this is like one of the most enlightening podcasts oh yeah and, sure. and we appreciate you sharing that wisdom i feel like the mma fans and the community watching this are going to love that and it's very motivating to have someone as accomplished as you give a good messaging because so many people now have so many people they watch on the internet that promote not really the best things that help them evolve in life as a lot of the mma fans were watching this uh, uh previous episodes we had a lot of people ask about the weight classes and what people felt the most comfortable at rampage and all these guys chuck what was your most comfortable weight class that you felt the best at? Oh, uh, 205, I think, is the best class for me. You know what I mean? Like, because 185, the process of weight loss is tough, man. You know that. Yeah. It's tough. I mean, and sometimes you, your strength not, it's yeah. not there anymore. You know what I mean? Like, in, for example, you have the training camp, really hard, training, strength, and everything. When you do the, the weight, weight cut process, the strength go away, man. No, the day of the fight, sometimes you don't have the same speed, the same. That's what I believe because when I, when I used to fight 205, I felt like strong, yeah. fast, you know what yeah. I mean? Like yeah, I hit the guy, I feel the guy can feel my, my punch. 185, I might be wrong, but I, I, I believe that. Mm-hmm. You didn't feel like you was too small for 205? You didn't? You yes, didn't, you, yes, too. But, 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 but you felt strong. Felt strong, even though I'm too small. Especially afterwards, you no, know, because after we our generation, people start to be like yeah. Gustafs and John yeah. John. Yeah. People they're big. Yeah. They're big. And they're man. also tall. They also have crazy reach. Yeah. And with crazy the game reach. now with yes. the, everybody being so kind of well versed in every martial art. You can't you gotta have a little bit of height advantage too, because yeah. everybody's kind of on an equal playing field with with the skill level. What about for training partners and, and sparring and getting ready for fights? Was there ever someone that really helped you the most? Someone you really enjoyed the best? Yes, I like Glover Teixeira, man. That's, really? That's, I love this guy because we live pretty much in the same way of thinking. You know what I mean? Like everything that I told you here, we always talk to each other and we yeah, we talk about that. You know? same, same mindset. Same mindset. Like... Uh, presence to be here in the present moment, you no, know, yeah. like, yeah. Uh, because I, at the end of the day, man, everybody's looking for happiness, looking for inner peace, but sometimes we searching in the wrong way, in the wrong, in the wrong place. You know what I mean? Like, we searching in the money, we searching in in, in drugs, in, mm-hmm. in alcohol. I respect everyone, yeah. but you know what I mean? Like, we search that when it passed this moment. We felt the pressure again. We felt like something, you missed something because we don't need that. You know yeah. I mean? Like If you find yourself like your own connection, you're going to be strong. You know? like, you're gonna the be, connection to your the team. Connect to, no, the connection to yourself too. You know what I mean? Yeah. The connect to yourself. But was he part of your team getting ready yes. for these fights? He's a part of my team. Yeah. Every, oh. time, every time when I fight, I talk to him, we train together. I, I don't think enough of MMA fans understand how tough and how good of a fighter Glover is. Yes. I, you know, I fought, I fought Glover. I think my last fight in the UFC, mm-hmm. I trained hard for him, but um, I wasn't, I wasn't nervous. You know, what I'm I wasn't yeah. like, I wasn't worried about him. There's no disrespect to him, but later on in my career, I just, I just got there. Even with Fedor, I wasn't nervous about him. And that's why I want to go into boxing, but. But um, I, I heard how good Glover was. And I heard from, like, from the grapevine from Chuck Liddell. Yeah. Yeah, Chuck Liddell said he used to train with him. And and I was like, oh, you know, whatever. He's just another guy. But he kicked my ass. And I, he's tough. I, he's man. tough. I mean, bro, he fought in the UFC, probably one of the oldest fighters ever. And he yeah. had the belt. He's 42. Probably, 42, yeah. he got the belt. Yeah. Oh, that's old to get the belt. And he did it in a phenomenal way. The guy's made out of nails. I mean, he could take punches. He could kick all the way to the end of his career. What about fighters? Did you have one fighter you loved the most growing up? 
I, I, I like I like the fighter. Yeah. Uh, I like Fedor. Oh Fedor, wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why is that? Fedor is he's such a nice guy. Yeah, he's he's a he's the greatest guy. Yeah. You just like you like his energy or like the way I like he he, I like the way that he behaves. I like the way that he fights. No, he's a very good fighter, especially in Japan, right? Yeah. He was like 10 years and undefeated. You know? yeah. But I, I like other fighters, of course. I like Verdun. I like, you know what I mean? Like Anderson Silver. I like everybody. Everybody. I think most of these guys did a great job for yeah. the sport. Do you ever train with Anderson? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. How good was Couple he at times. training? He's good too. Yeah. He's good, man. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty. It's pretty amazing. As we wrap up here and we get ready to to let you go, I want to say thank you for coming to the Jackson House here in Newport Beach. I know you flew in, saw some of the chaos. We have T.J. Dillashaw here. Mm -hmm. We have Calm, the the boxer, and a bunch of our fighters. Anderson Silva's kids are here. Gabriel. Yes, I know. Gabriel, yeah, they, yeah, I saw you guys talking, and it's cool because the energy we have here at Jackson with the team and what we're building here with our fight team and our skate team and the brand as itself. We're really trying to install this 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 confidence and trying to elevate people's mentality of themselves personally with our jewelry and the product and what we do. It's kind of the ethos behind that. And now transfer that over into the media and have good guests that really talk about, you know, good positive messaging. We have a lot of fun on here. This was a great one though. We've never had this much seriousness. Yeah. I didn't hear one sexual joke from him the no, whole time. No, I didn't say that much. Yeah. But but I'm gonna be honest, I I I I really appreciate you coming here. It's a big honor and just hearing you talk make me want to be a better person, you know, and and just learning about the way you look at life and your mentality, you know, I, I hope it's as contagious uh, with the fans as it was to me. I want to, I want to, uh, you know, do better and and look at things a little different. Did did you get inspired? Oh, bro, by I feel insane. Yeah. I feel motivated right now to go fight. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, thank you so much for the opportunity. Oh, I'm of course, a big fan of you, my oh, friend. Thank, thank you. you. It's amazing to watch both of you guys sit here yeah. and have so much respect for each other too. That's something we don't see a lot anymore in the world of MMA is that you guys yeah. fought each other. You guys were both at the height. There's no ego. It's so much good energy in here. It feels great. Before we let you go, I got one more question though. Yes. What What was your favorite victory you ever had in MMA? Your whole career. For the belts against Rashad Evans. Really? Yes. First belt with UFC, that's yes. it. Yes, because, you know, uh, most of the people, they don't know, when I was 15 years old, I saw UFC for the first time, and I saw Hoisey Gracie beating out those guys. Then at that moment, I said, I want to do that for my life. No, I want to do that for, for a living. Then I put the dream in my, my mind, 15 years old, and when I was 30 years old, that came true. You know? It was like instant, and like people think, you know, like took time, you no know, day by day training and everything. And when I got the belt, you no know, was like, hey, you no, know, uh, I got that. You no, know, like I I believe in the process. You know what I mean? Like because I I went through a lot of stuff. You no, know? I went to Japan, Thailand. Then now I believe in the process. You need the process to get something. You no, know, people think that everything's gonna be fast. Like your social media, everything's gonna be fair yeah, because yeah. you put you post a photo. No, if you want something real, it's gonna take time. You no, know, wow. people people has to understand that. You no, know, take time, pay the price, believe in the process. You're gonna get there. See Glover, 42 years old, but he kept his track. He kept in track. You know, training hard, loss, defeats, wins. Keep believe that, but you can you can win at the end of the day. If you don't give up, you can win. For sure, you can win. No, that's crazy. Yeah, that's a message that people can 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 eat on. If you yeah. don't give up, you can win. Yeah, and and uh, honestly, uh, one one thing we had when I told everybody you were coming on, everybody asked me, "Did you train ever with Jean Claude Van Damme?" I never, never. No. no, did he ever reach out to you to train with you? No, I just met him once or twice here in LA, but I never had a chance to train. Yeah. No, no, no. Okay. Yeah, a lot of people were asking me if you guys ever trained together. I wish. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? yeah. You watched a lot of his stuff, though? Yeah, so yeah. when I was a kid. No, yeah. I, uh, Have you done any movies? Yeah, I did uh, Never Back It Down. Oh, yeah. Two yeah, yeah. with Mike J. White. Yeah. Yes. How was it working with him? It was good. Yeah. He's a good martial artist. Yeah, though. good. Yeah, he's good. We yeah. did sparring in the middle of the movie. Yeah. I think he could be, I think he could have been a real fighter. Yes. Yeah. I, really? Yeah, I think yeah. he'd do well. I think he'd do, I think he'd, wow. he would have done well in his prime. I believe prime. so. Yeah, yeah, I believe so. He, Doing good, he's kicked good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You did a lot of moves, right? Yeah, I've done. I've done. I've done 
handful, probably like close to 15 now, maybe. 15. But most of them like, you know, B movies. Most of the like little small movies. Okay. The A-Team was one of the biggest movies of that the was year. The, that was the biggest one, but, you know, and I did two big ones. That's a huge that's movie. That's a huge that was, movie. That was, that was, yeah. see, it didn't go as big as they thought it was going to go because they thought it was going to be no more sequels. Yeah. So it didn't do as well as they thought. That's why I'm not, that's why I'm not as super jazzed about it like everybody is because I know what they had planned. And it was still okay. an amazing movie. You, guess what? Guess what? Uh, uh, fucked us up, Karate Kid. Really? <laughs> 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 they released the same day as Karate Kid. Like, oh, no, that note, dude, we're out. Dude. All right, all right, hey guys, I hope hey. you guys enjoyed this episode as much as I did. I learned a lot. He dropped a lot of gems. I hope you guys rewatch this and pay attention and make sure y'all put in the comments which one of his um his his quotes and stuff you know helped you out and that you learned for and, and let us know who you guys want to hear next. <laughs>